you left Capitol Hill to, to check out John Tester, red state Democrat, uh, try, running for re-election. And I want to talk about the bigger picture here. How does he respond to, I, and I know you had this coverage, like, we are facing something this country's never, hasn't faced arguably since the 1850s. Um, and there is this sense of people are just sort of going about their normal business, just as we wonder, what's going on here? How does he think he should meet the moment? It's a great question, Chuck, and, and what I was most struck by in, in our conversation with John Tester, and, and I think this happens often when we get to leave the D.C. bubble and meet these uh, senators, uh, you know, where they are most comfortable in their home states, is how far removed uh, he feels his constituents are from the daily back and forth of the drama that's taking place inside D.C. and then within the presidential campaign. You know, the biggest problem for John Tester is if his race uh, in Montana becomes a nationalized race, if it becomes all of about Donald Trump and Joe Biden, then mm -hmm. he's probably in trouble because uh, Donald Trump won this, this state uh, very does he easily in 2020. That? Yes, he does. Interesting. You know, he, yeah. Yes, he, he, he absolutely uh, understands that a lot of the same people that voted for him uh, in 2020 voted for Donald Trump as well. And what he told me is that he's not going to run a, a race any differently than the one he ran when he initially ran for the state legislature you know, several decades ago, that it's going right. to be a focus on his deep ties to the state. He says that he has an inherited advantage, that he's lived in Montana his entire life. Right. He thinks that resonates with the voters there beyond the national politics, but there's no doubt that he understands that there's these other big issues that are looming over this race yeah. that he's going to have to try and find a way to fight through. Well, one of those issues is Joe Biden, and there's different ways Joe Biden's uh, could become an issue for him. Obviously, he's he's more worried about the caricature of Joe Biden becoming an issue for him, arguably. Perhaps that's age being the biggest factor there. What's his sense? Well, it's interesting because this came up in our conversation when I was asking broadly about the age of elected leaders in general, and, and he acknowledged that, that he's seen, he didn't mention them by name, but very specific members of the United States Senate deteriorate to the point where he was very concerned about them and made clear that they were no longer up to the job. But when I asked about the president himself, he had a much different tack, despite the fact that the president is in his 80s. Listen to how he described his view of Joe Biden. Joe Biden, when I've been around him, and that's not every day, but when right. I've been around him, when I've seen him on the news, he's absolutely 100 percent with it, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and he's got his he's, his recall, his his uh, cognitive ability, whatever you want to call it. I'm yeah. not a doc; I'm a dirt farmer, but <laughs> yeah. he's he's fine, and yeah. he's doing a good job. I think folks are making a bigger deal out of it than it is, right? But you know. We'll see what I'm like at 82. I, <laughs> I doubt I'll be running for president, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, but again, it gets back to your point. This yeah. is up to the voters. The voters, right? voters need to yeah. deal with it. Uh, but to your earlier point, uh, Chuck, about how this uh, interplays with Joe Biden and his reelection, the National Republican Senate Campaign Committee, the campaign arm, already mm -hmm. out pushing our interview with John Tester saying nice things about Joe Biden as an example of how he is no longer in touch with the voters of Montana. So this is a big issue for him. Hey, look, I know I'm, I'm going along with you guys, but very quickly, uh, Kirsten Cinema is out there trying to get Democrats to compromise with Tommy Tupper. But what does a compromise look like? And is that going anywhere in order to get him to drop his blocking of every military promotion in the Pentagon? Yeah, I'd love to know the answer to that question. Kirsten Cinema won't answer that question to us. We only found yeah. out about this because our colleagues, Sahil Kapoor and Alan Smith, got a secret recording of, of a conversation right. she had with the Chamber of Commerce. But I don't know where the common ground here is on this. Both sides seem pretty entrenched yeah. uh, in their positions. Uh, uh, Tuberville's made it clear that there's no political upside to him backing down from this fight. Uh, and there's really no other way around right. it in terms of the abortion issue in the Department of Defense. Uh, so this is a stalemate that I think is going to continue for quite some time. Well, and by the way, Tommy Tupper. Well, right there. The incentive structure in America is broken to accomplish stuff. The incentive structure in America is to stand your ground and do nothing. It, it, there is political reward in that. That's for sure. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.